12.30 on Midstate Television. stories tonight, Griffith still in with a chance in the attempt to bring a major wool scouring plant to the area. Narendra Shire Council calls tenders for a quarter of a million dollar sports stadium to provide the town with a single basketball court. And the state premier responds to rural criticism on the increase in the rail, in rail freight charges. Good evening, I'm Lou Hitchick with MTN9 Local News. Griffith's prospects for attracting a major wool scouring plant to the area seem to be improving steadily. The South Australian-based firm G.H. Michelle & Sons has been comparing the relative merits of several large country towns for the proposed plant and some of the firm's directors will be meeting with Wade Shire officials this weekend. Michelle's are looking for a suitable site for the relocation of the plant they're presently operating in Botany in Sydney. The proposed development would mean an investment of more than $5 million in plant and would pr provide about 150 jobs for the community. If the plant is established at Griffith, it'll strengthen the arguments for bringing natural gas to the MIA by increasing the energy demand of the area. As Wadeshire President, Councillor John Dalbroy explains, Griffith now seems to be one of the locations on a short list still being considered by the directors of G.H. Michelle and Sons. We believe, Lou, that uh, we are on the short list. I believe there's ourselves and two other sites. And um, we are having discussions uh, again with the Shire Clark and myself with two directors from uh, Michelle at the weekend. And hopefully we, we will be able to know what will swing the deal. Uh, from the Shire's point of view, we are very keen to see this uh, wool topping plant established in, in our area mainly because it utilises uh, a great amount of labour. And uh, not also labour, but then I believe uh, the service industries, transport and electricians and what have you, will also benefit. And so we'll be very, very keen to see that uh, plant uh, established in Wade Shire. Has there been a figure put on the, the, the estimated number of jobs that it might create? We believe uh, about uh, 150 at this stage and the total cost of the plan between five and six million dollars. So it's a major project and uh, we're certainly hoping that uh, we will get it. Narendra Shire Council has called tenders for the construction of a sports stadium for the town and district. However, the final design falls a long way short of the building some of the planners have had in mind during the past 18 months of discussions on the subject. The tenders are to be for the construction for, of a stadium to house a single basketball court with some provision for extra space for indoor sports. The building will provide change rooms, toilets, a kiosk and a separate foyer, but the earlier dreams of a double basketball court and a gymnasium in an adjacent building have been dropped in the cost cutting that's been necessary to keep the budget under control. The final decision was for a building the Narandra community could afford to fit in a budget of $275,000. Shire Health Surveyor Cliff King says he's hoping to accept a tender by the end of the year with a possible completion date by about August of 1982. In West Wyalong, two youths from the Blue Mountains town of Lawson have been charged on several drug offences following a police raid on a house at Kaikiora. David Farrell, aged 20, and James Madden, 18, have been bailed to appear in West Wyalong Court again tomorrow morning. Farrell, who's been living in the area for several months, is charged with cultivating and possessing materials for smoking marijuana. Madden, who's only moved to Kaikiora recently, faces charges of smoking and possessing utensils for smoking marijuana. The charges arise from a raid by police from West Wyalong and Narandra when its alleged 42 marijuana plants, up to a height of about 60 centimetres, were found growing under artificial light in a house at Kaikiora. The State Premier, Neville Rann, has responded quickly to the rural backlash against the recently announced 25% hike in rail freight rates. Mr Rann has justified the rise on the basis that it's two years since the last increase and the government held back on the rise because of the recent drought. In Orange recently to open the new Borg Warner rail track plant, the Premier told Owen Martin why the increase has now been announced. Obviously, uh, 
because there's been more than two years uh, since the last increase. Uh, I said uh, at the time when the increases were announced that it might be preferable if uh, freight rates, together with uh, passenger fares, were adjusted e each year, uh, rather than let uh, two, two and a half years go by without any adjustment. And then, of course, the impact is so much less. You say you could adjust it on a yearly basis, but why not 6% on a quarterly basis throughout the year to give business people a time to plan? Well, I think uh, if you did it quarterly, it may not give them time to plan. I think uh, if that were done, uh, then it would, uh, because of the four adjustments a year, uh, create uh, much more uncertainty. I think uh, uh, the government certainly in the future will look at matters uh, more on an annual basis rather than let uh, the situation accumulate as we did. One of the factors, of course, which contributed to that was the drought, uh, because uh, we were uh, paying out a lot of uh, drought money to people on the land. Uh, they weren't doing very well at the time, uh, so we held off with the increases, and now, fortunately for most of the state, uh, the situation is much different. But do you think they can really afford if some of those farmers who've had a really bad time during the drought? Oh, I think, uh, generally speaking, the situation has been adjusted, uh, because you must look at the uh, increases in prices uh, that will be recovered, and all in all, uh, whilst uh, on the face of it it may look somewhat steep increase, I think it's a fair and reasonable increase in the circumstances. A team of skin divers from the Corowa Rescue Squad spent several hours today in an unsuccessful attempt for a, a, an unsuccessful search for a stolen car that was allegedly pushed into the Murrumbidgee River near Narendra. The divers were called in after police were told about the car's whereabouts by the three people charged with the theft of the vehicle. Police allege the three, one adult and two juveniles, stole the 67 model Falcon from a street in Narandra two months ago. All three have been bailed to appear in Narandra court on November the 2nd. In the meantime, another team of skin divers will continue the search for the car next weekend. The staff of the Griffith Visitors Centre recently took a familiarisation trip around the tourist facilities and attractions of the Carathool Shire. The tour is part of an expansion of the responsibilities of the Griffith Centre to include the promotion of tourism in the Carathool Shire area. Tourism officer Rob Jason says the trip took in accommodation facilities, nature reserves and the townships of Gilgowie, Rankin Springs, Merriwagga, Hilston and Carathool. He says he hopes the tour of Carathool Shire will become a yearly event to keep the staff of the Griffith Centre fully aware of the attractions and facilities of the area. The recently formed Griffith and District Sport and Recreation Council is to have a say in recommending the priorities for future allocations of state government grants to local sporting groups. The grants are made each year by the Department of Sport and Recreation and in the past the Shire Council has recommended the priorities. However, the Shire leaders have agreed to give the Sports Council a say subject to the Shire's approval. Several major projects in the Griffith area, including the Kalina Sports Ground and the Griffith Go-Kart Track, have picked up substantial capital grants from the Sport and Recreation Fund in the last year. Speaking of sport, here's the man with his finger on the sporting pulse of the Riverina. Alan Wallett has the details on the weekend's round of matches in the Pennant Bowls competition. Alan. Thank you, Lou, and good evening, everyone. Two major upsets in the Pennant Bowls played on the weekend with the final game last weekend before the semi-finals. Firstly, the Griffith X Servicemen's Club, who are currently looked like getting the double chance of slip back to third place. They were defeated 7-0 by Narandra, and the Leakland District Bowling Club eliminated from this year's number one pennants when they went down 5-2 to the John Darien Club. Semi-finals next week, and in the major semi-final in the number ones, the Leakland Soldiers Club will play Narandra at the Wade Club in Leakland. Minor semi-final will be played between Griffith the Servicemen's Club and the John Darien Club at the Leighton District. The number two pennants, they have a deferred match to play. It was washed out, I believe, three or four weeks ago. Uh, that will be played this Sunday and then the first semi-final the following Sunday. In the number three pennants, Griffith X Service, the Leighton Soldiers Club at, John Dar at the John Darien Club. And also in the minor semi-final, John Darien Club will play the Hay Services Club at Colliambly. Number four pennants, Darlington Point will play Leighton Soldiers Club at Narandra, and Gilgowie will play Narandra, and that game will be played at the Whit 
Flinton Bowling Club. The number six pennants are playing their grand final this weekend and the Griffith X Servicemen's Club will play Collie Ambly at the Wade Club in Leeton. A quick round up and of the top scores in the Griffith uh, and District Cricket Association over the weekend. Hanwood made 69 runs. Frank Valeri top scoring with 33. Area Hotel and Reply 6 for 123. Andrew Carver 45. Leagues Club 102. John Rule made 27. The ex service Club at Stumps 2 down for 178. Roy Binks the top scorer there and still going on 65 not out. The game between Juniors and CCY Yenda. Juniors 7 for 250. Seth Spence 70 and Randall Strongman 66 CCY ended a bat next week. Top bowling honours for the weekend from the area hotel. Peter Carey was able to take six wickets for the uh, 20 runs, and for the leagues, Frank Valeri took two for 23. In Leeton, Witten scored 117. John Gable made 53. Colts at Stumps and reply one for 12. Yanko Club eight for 122. Rolly Alexander 119. Golf Club will bat next week. The bowling club 129. Pat Parsons top scoring with 49. The sports club at Stumps. 2 for 24 in reply. The best of the bowlers in the Leeton cricket over the weekend for the Colts. Uh, Wesley Stiller, 4 for 44. Uh, Ross Elwin, 3 for 60. And Jay Pendergast, 3 for 67. The Police and Citizens Golf Day will be held. It's a charity golf day, of course, be held at Leeton at the golf course in Leeton on this coming Thursday. It will commence at 8 a.m. The cost is $10, all inclusive, good trophies, morning and afternoon tea and a barbecue in the evening, proceeds to the Far West, Children, Far West Children's Health Scheme. Anybody that would like any more information or if you'd like to tee off before 8 a.m., if you contact the Leeton Police Station. OK, that's all we have time for tonight. Tomorrow night we'll be having, having a look at the big suspensions. Uh, three Wagga basketballers were suspended for a total of 54 weeks. We'll have a look at that tomorrow night as well as the Hilston District Cricket Association along with Narendra. When you're going to become a farmer, it pays you to watch the weather and that's what our weatherman, Young Lou, has been doing all day. So with the latest on the weather, here he is, Lou Hitchick. Good night. And it wasn't a bad day to watch the weather from the comfort of an air-conditioned office either with temperatures ranging up to 34 degrees in the viewing area today. Let's check the temperatures. Mac the maximum in the area today was Narendra, where the, uh, the temperature reached 34 degrees. The minimum there was 17. In other areas, Griffith recorded a top of 32, an overnight minimum of 16. Hay, 33 to 19, the range. In Hilston, the minimum 21, the maximum 32. Wagga recorded a top of 32, last night's minimum 14, and in Leeton, the top was 32, the minimum 17. The Leeton data was presented with the courtesy of the Yanko Agricultural Research Centre. The evaporation reading, as at 9 o'clock this morning, was 8 millimetres. Checking the forecast of the viewing area, the Riverina and MIA can expect cooler, gusty west to southwesterly winds with a few sh thundery showers clearing during the day tomorrow with cloudy periods. The further outlook is fine and mild to warm. Tomorrow's expected top temperature for Griffith will be 23 degrees, qu quite a bit cooler than today. The central western slopes and plains can expect very warm to hot northwesterly winds turning milder with gusty southwesterly or southerly winds tomorrow. A few thundery showers and winds raising some dust. The further outlook is dry and warm. In the lower western, the forecast is for cooler, gusty west to southwesterly winds with a few showers clearing to dry tomorrow with cloudy periods and the further outlook dry and warm. So that's it then, a little cooler tomorrow, but then getting dry and warm as the week progresses. That's our news and weather for Tuesday night. We'll be back tomorrow. Good evening. Once again, it's come to the end of tonight's viewing at MTN 9. We trust you enjoyed the evening's viewing and invite you back tomorrow for another top lineup. But for now, it's good night and pleasant dreams.